what is Google Merchant Center next? Well, this is the new iteration of Google Merchant Center. Google Merchant Center is the program or platform site, whatever you want to call it, that is used for e-commerce uh, advertisers who want to run shopping ads, performance max on Google ads, leveraging product feeds that the product data needs to flow from a client's website or a spreadsheet or somewhere into Google Merchant Center. And then from Google Merchant Center, it goes over to Google ads and shows up in actual advertising. So Google is in the process of rolling out Google Merchant Center next, which is a a whole new redesign interface of using Google Merchant Center. Um, if you don't have it yet, you won't see this word next up in the top left hand corner. Um, if you do have it, you'll see that. And um, by some point in 2024, don't know exactly when yet, but by some point in 2024, everybody should be moved over to Google Merchant Center next. So I'm going to walk you through just step by step. What does it look like um, as of recording this um, in late 2023, end of December 2023? Um, what does it look like? Um, give you my two cents along the way about things I like, things I don't like, and hopefully this will be helpful to you. Hey, this is John from Stub Group. We are a top premier Google partner digital advertising agency, and we help businesses dominate Google ads and make money online. So let's jump in. All right, so first we got the overview tab, and I would say one of the key, key things that I see with Google Merchant Center Next is that Google is trying to make, um, make things more actionable, essentially tell you, hey, here's what you need to do to improve things. Here's what performance is looking like from both your paid and organic side of things. They're really emphasizing organic more as well, uh, which I'll, I'll show you um, how they're doing that. And I think ultimately they're trying to, to help you understand the data better and take action upon the data better. So this overview page has some different um, widgets for product performance, product status, and then different recommendations informed obviously by Google's AI about things that you could potentially do to improve performance. Obviously, as with everything Google AI, just because they're recommending something here doesn't mean you should actually do it. Always take the recommendation with a grain of salt, run it through a logical framework and see if it makes sense for you. Um, but they're trying to you know, push you in the right direction. So that's the overview page. Next up, we have notifications. Obviously, this is notifications. Um, they have a couple different uh, categories. They've got increased performance. They've got grow your business. There may be additional categories that get put out as well, but this is where you can see what is Google telling you as a notification about your account. Next up under this, your business heading, we've got products. And so this is where the product information is stored. Now, this is not actually where you get to your product feed. Um, to get to your product feed, you go up to this gear icon and go to data sources. I'll, I'll show you that in a second um, and how to access that. But this is where you go and see the, the product information after it's been added via a feed. So you've got list of products and then you've got um, total products are in the merchant center. And you've got the total number of products that are not showing on Google for different reasons. Um, generally because of some kind of a disapproval or policy violation. And then you've got um, up here are these tabs, of course, you've got all products, and then you've got needs attention, which is generally going to be similar to the products that are not showing on Google, but not necessarily exclusively that it could also be warnings about products that are showing on Google, but that could uh, be improved in some way. Um, so you've got um, options right here where they're basically Google saying, hey, some of your products might have missing or inaccurate product details, blah, blah, blah. And you've got uh, GTN issues, limited performance issues, basically all the things that would have shown up in the diagnostics tab in the previous version of Google Merchant Center now shows up here under needs attention. And you've got both um, kind of the, the categories of things that need attention as well as the specific products that need attention. Then you also have sales tax. I don't know why sales tax is here under products. I would put it um, under a separate, you know, heading over here, but whatever, they've got sales tax over here under products. And this is where you would select what uh, states you charge sales tax in um, and how much you charge for sales tax in those states. You can click edit here and you can see the different different options. And as, as usual, you can have um, automatic based upon customer location. You can select whether or not you have taxable shipping or you can set manual tax rate for your different states that you're, that you're shipping to. Then you've got automatic improvements. Um, this was in the previous iteration, just now in a different place in this new iteration. And this is where you can control whether or not Google is allowed to automatically update the prices, the availability and the condition of the products in uh, or the of the yeah the products in your feed um, based upon what they're crawling on your website if they see that there's something outdated in your feed maybe it hasn't updated yet but your website has updated when you've got these things turned on it gives google the permission to say hey the price on the website is now 54.90 let's go ahead and update the price in the ad to say that 
Um, you also have automatic image improvements, which means you give Google the permission to automatically rem remove things like promotional text from your product images um, because you're not allowed to have promotional text in your product images. So this allows you to automatically um, remove that thing which could prevent you from serving those products as ads on Google. So you've got the different options and whether or not you want to use them, again, case by case basis, depending upon your website platform and the frequency with which you update your feed and different things like that. But this is where you would find those things. Then over here, you've got Product Studio. Uh, this is really, really cool. I made a whole separate video about this. I recommend watching that. I walk you through exactly how to use this and what it does. This is a really, really cool feature. Uh, and this is brand new and exclusive to Google Merchant Center Next. It's not available in the previous iteration of Google Merchant Center. Then next up over here on the left, you've got your shipping and returns information. Um, again, similar in concept to, um, to the previous um, iteration of the Merchant Center. You've got an area for return policies and you've got an area for shipping uh, info. Um, then up, next up, you've got business info, and this is where you'd have your different business details, your domain, your business logos, colors, um, checkout page, etc. Then under marketing, you've got organic, which at the moment basically is is like opt in or out. Um, so right now, this this client has opted into what Google calls free listings, which means that Google Google can leverage the structured data from Google Merchant Center to inform how it shows um, products organically. Um, on Google and the SERP and in Google Shopping results. Then you've got ad campaigns, um, which this is a little bit different than what was in the previous iteration. You can see examples of what your ads look like. Um, you can see whether or not your Google Merchant Center account is linked to your Google Ads account. You can actually add billing details, which um, depending upon the access level you have with Google Ads, which is interesting and, and new. Um, and you can create a campaign, um, again, depending upon access level from within Google Merchant Center. Now, I would probably never recommend creating a campaign from within Google Merchant Center. Um, I would always start in the Google Ads side, at least at least now. Um, I don't see a reason why you'd want to start from Google Merchant Center, but it's an option. So do with that as you will. Um, next up, you've got promotions, probably a little bit easier to get to this in the new interface than the old interface. And this is where you'd have different things like um, sales around seasonal events or you know coupon codes you're pushing, anything along those lines. You control um, all promotions and promotion feeds from this location. Then under activity, you've got performance. And there are, as you can see, a bunch of different tabs here, some of which are really interesting. Um, and Google's giving you data, like I mentioned, they're, they're giving you more data or trying to further emphasize data about not just the ad side of things, but also the organic side of things. So you can see here um, clicks from organic listings, free listings, as well as clicks from ads. Um, and that is uh, pretty pretty interesting. You can see the, the graphs in different ways as well. Um, you can also see some information about search trends. So this is what people are searching for on Google, and they're categorized by different categories that match to the products that you're selling. So we can see, oh, interesting, we've actually seen a decrease in searches for uh, vehicle tires um, over the past couple of days, uh, whereas pretty much you know static, although not much to work with either way, but static search volume for some of these other um, categories that we've got here. And then you can also click view all searches. And in this report, um, we can see basically more information about um, what we saw on the previous page with projections, which is pretty cool forecast. Um, and you can download this and play around with it in Excel as well. Then you've got a products tab and this products tab gives you some data coming over from Google ads. Um, well, actually from across the board um, about clicks, impressions, click through rate, um, organic conversions and so forth. You can see clicks on your product from organic, from ads. You can see what your top products are, brands that you sell, etc. cetera. Um, and then you've got competitive visibility. So this is pretty cool because you can see, similar to the auction insights and the Google ad side of things, you can see businesses that are at a similar place as you. So kind of your, your direct competitors, um, as well as businesses with the highest visibility on Google, which for a lot of verticals are gonna be, you know, the usual suspects, Amazon, eBay, Walmart, etc. Then you've got um, market demand. So this is Google estimating how much demand is there for the different categories of products that you sell and the brands that you sell. 
Um, so this can be pretty interesting. You can also see what are some of the top selling products across Google in the categories that you sell, which could be useful if you're like, hey, I want to um, I want to go out and add more products to my store and I want to know what's selling well already. What is there a lot of demand for? You could leverage these competitive insights to get some of those, uh, some of those insights. And same thing for brands. You can see what brands are increasing in popularity as well. So maybe you can get onto, uh, get onto that. Um, next up, you've got pricing. So this is pretty cool. You can see your prices compared to the price on Google across some of your products, across some of your brands. Google doesn't always have benchmark prices. It's going to depend upon you know, the popularity of the brand that you carry, um, whether or not other people also sell that same product or if it's just exclusive to you, things like that. And you can also see um, products with the highest price gap. So we can see for this product that there's a 16% price gap between the average price on Google and our price. Um, then you've got promotions tab. So this is essentially engagements with the promotions that you're running in your account. Again, seasonal sales, uh, discounts, things like that. Then you've got non-product website results. So this one is, this is interesting. They describe it as um, if you're looking at clicks, for example, the total number of clicks on our images or website links that led to your non-product website pages. So um, you know, generally when someone engages with your product listing ad, they're going directly to the product page for that product. But there may be other ways people can engage with your brand that get them to your homepage or your shipping return policy pages, to category pages, etc. And so that's what this is trying to track here, um, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and then you've got shopping experience scorecard, which is basically Google, uh, another place for Google to give you recommendations about how to improve things. You're often going to see that they want to link your PayPal account, uh, maybe add more images, fix display promotions, etc. Similar to the, not the notifications area, but a little bit different. Um, and then you can also compare yourself to different verticals, which is interesting. So direct competitors, you can see, hey, how do we compare to direct competitors, which is which is cool, um, and so forth and so on. So a lot of interesting competitive insights here that uh, we're just going to take advantage of for our clients. So that's everything you can access from over here on the left currently. Um, and Google's still making changes to this interface. So if it looks different when you see it than it is now, that's why. Um, next up, we've got this gear icon up here. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, you've got data sources. So this is a feed that you might be pulling from your, directly from your website or from a third party tool uh, into the Merchant Center. This is where you control that, schedule that, etc. cetera. One um, bone I have to pick with Google is that when you click into any of these options up here, uh, you are moved away from the, uh, the menu. You have to click the X to get back to the menu. So that's annoying. It adds additional steps that shouldn't be there, but is what it is for now. If any engineers at Google are watching this, please make our life a little bit easier and keep the menu everywhere. Um, people in access, pretty straightforward. This is who has access to your account. Nothing really different here as compared to previous version of the um, GMC, Google Merchant Center. Then you've got apps. So this is um, Google apps like Google Ads, Google Business Profile, etc. things you might connect to your Google Merchant Center, as well as third-party apps that you might connect related to product inventory or shipping or things like that. Then you've got add-ons. So you can discover options. Um, so if you're you know, more on the sophisticated advanced side of things, using API calls, that's where you'd activate that. If you wanted to use custom reports, that's where you'd activate that. And then this tab over here shows you what is already being used and active, which is promotions. So we've already turned on the feature that we want to use promotions in this account. And so that shows up as an active add-on. Comparison shopping services is something that's pr primarily relevant to people in the EU, uh, the UK, and Switzerland. Um, so if you're in one of those markets, you can check this out. Um, for most advertisers outside of those markets, it's not really a, a thing. Um, general account options. This is where you can do a couple different things. So for example, product protection, you could turn this on and this would prevent Google from removing more than X percentage of products from your feed at a given time. So where this could come in handy is let's say something went wrong with your feed and um, the data got corrupted and Google basically was being told by your feed import to that, that the products are no longer there in the feed. So remove the products from Google Merchant Center um, and you don't want to do that. This would provide some protection against that type of thing from taking place. 
and you can read more about it by clicking that link there. Uh, language and time zone, you can set those things there, pretty straightforward. Some more information about comparison shopping services. And then advanced account setup, if you're you know, really more on the advanced side of things, um, this doesn't apply to most advertisers, but um, if you need it, you kind of know it, and this is where you request a conversion related to that. And this is also where you would delete your Merchant Center account, which I don't recommend doing because that's going to create problems. Um, all right, what else do we have? We have conversion settings. So this is new as well. Um, Google is starting to um, give you the option to integrate more conversion related things into your Google Merchant Center account. Um, so you can connect Shopify and different things in here. So definitely something worth checking out as you get up to speed on this new, uh, this new platform. And then you've got email archives. So this is a list of the notifications that Google has emailed to you in case you want to check back through that. And then you've got personal preferences for the account, which is related to, hey, what kind of email notifications do you want to receive, etc. So that is pretty much it. Um, one, there, there's still a lot of things that we're kind of discovering and figuring out about this, but one thing I do want to point out, which is not available as best as I can see yet in the new version of things, is the ability to go to a specific product and test and see for shipping to a specific zip code, what would the shipping cost and tax be based upon your shipping and tax settings? That's a really big missing thing because um, you know often you'll be trying to figure out, hey, do I have the right settings in place? I wanna make sure I'm communicating correct information to people seeing my ads and also Google will suspend your account if you don't give correct information. So they've actually made it more difficult to figure that out. Um, I don't know why, I think that's just an oversight. Hopefully they'll fix that at some point, but that is what it is for the time being. So if you are using Google Merchant Center next, um, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? If you have any questions about it, leave that as a comment as well. And we'll tackle those, get you answers. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful. If it has been helpful, tap that subscribe button to get more content just like this. And if you don't want to worry about Google Merchant Center, you don't have the time to learn the, the, uh, the new interface or all the new changes that Google is constantly rolling out, Go to stubgroup.com, request a free consultation. Let's talk about how our experts at Stub Group can handle this for you and dominate Google Ads on your behalf. Until next time, signing off.